Harley Davidson's 131 cubic inch Screaming Eagle crate engine. Actually, pretty good engine. I've installed three or four of these, had really good luck. This particular customer has had this one apart uh, two or three times at the dealer. It's had a lot of issues. Uh, since it's been apart, I have a leaking head gasket. The oil line in the back is leaking and in the front, and it's making a terrible ticking sound. And he's been complaining about the tick sound since the get-go. I mean, he also explained to me, he put roller rockers in, and it actually got louder. So that kind of gives me an idea of what path I need to go down to maybe uh, fix this. But it, we're kind of going to go through and more or less measure everything and, and make sure it's nice and tight. I am told he did have a S&S &S, uh, oil pump put in this and uh, I'm not sure about everything else in the lower end. Hopefully it's got uh, tappet cuffs and things like that. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. And you know, uh, this has popped up a bunch of times about the stock plastic tappet cuffs. Stock applications, 100% I think they're fine. Uh, I haven't seen one fail that I can remember. I've had the bolts break, but that's usually when guys trying to take them out and they don't use heat, and some of my previous videos have gone over that. On higher lift cams though, I'd highly recommend a performance tappet cuff uh, just for that extra security. Um, anyway, it'd make me sleep better at night. The 131 is a really good engine, about 131 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheel. You know, they're getting that through its uh, uh, four and a half inch stroke uh, engine and a uh, 4.31 inch bore. Now they do have the new 135. I have not gotten my hands on one yet. The new 135 center cooled engine. That is a basically four and five eighths stroke. It's the same uh, bore and they're using actually the same tooled steel cylinder liner, uh, but the outer cylinder, the fins is different because they've cut those uh, to fit the new intake in because it's a bigger intake. It sits on an angle and they're actually uh, trying to get more air into the closer intake valve and by making an oval port like they've done that's going to help with that because normally uh, as I've gone over some pulse wave stuff and intake track things before and I actually designed my own intake called the pulse charger so I've done a lot of research and measuring and dealing with intake ports and intake track uh, on a normal, let's say, two-valve Harley, the air is always going to go back towards that uh, back corner of the intake. Matter of fact, when you're, you're actually measuring a uh, tuned intake track, you're always starting from the back, the furthest back spot of the valve all the way out uh, through the intake track. But when we went to four heads, that's, that has changed now. So they're finding that yes, more air is getting to that back valve. They want to make more air get into the first uh, intake valve. So they've changed that intake port. And I think that's going to help tremendously. Plus that's a center cooled engine now, center cooled heads. And I'm told the heads are actually running 40 degrees cooler, which in the Harley world, that's incredible. I don't, in, in any world, actually. I mean, that's that's a that's a good deal. So anyway, I'm going to start taking this apart. You'll see I already have the exhaust off. The main reason for that was the customer wanted new polished rotors front back and it's a lot easier to take the exhaust off. Get that done now. Uh, I've also bled the clutch and uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to go through this engine. I'll stop the video at certain points if I think I find something or I have some information from you. At the beginning of the uh, video, I also showed the parts that we have laid out for now. And uh, we'll go from there. So please like, subscribe. I hope you enjoy the content and uh, let's get going. Okay, let me show you something. First, let's get the ET sensor wire out of the way. Remove this. I'm gonna try to give you a close-up view here. I have a light. So let's look in here, the rear intake, and you're gonna see some oil. Now, you can see it on my finger here, this oil. Back out a little bit. Uh, a little bit of grit in the oil. Oil, most of the oil that we see here is obviously from the breather passage and that oil is obviously going to get in the air cleaner, gets back in through the uh, intake track, and ideally gets burnt off in a perfect world. Um, but there is some grit in here, and actually that is 
carbon. We're going to talk a little bit about reversion, which I have talked about in past videos. It was either in soft tail, slim one, or slim two, dueling slims. Uh, we did touch upon reversion, uh, but let's talk about it again because I have a lot of questions about that. Let's say during a normal combustion cycle, uh, when you're on the exhaust stroke, we have our, what's called, it's technically a pulse wave. It's moving at the speed of sound, it comes down, it runs through the exhaust system, hits the end of the pipe, and what's not absorbed by a baffle, that's why straight pipes are a definite issue because there's nothing to absorb this pulse wave. That pulse wave travels back up the pipe, gets into the combustion chamber and actually can get into the intake. Obviously, we don't have any way to combust inside the intake itself. That, so where's that carbon coming from? Well, a lot of technicians say, oh, I got a bad valve seat, it's leaking. Well, that's not the case. That's not what it is. Occasionally it might be, but on a newer engine, uh, just not, not, just not that common, right? Unless we bent a valve or, you know, the guy's really beating the shit out of it and something like that happened, whatever. But what happens is, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and we have that pulse wave traveling back up, screwing up the next actual combustion cycle, uh, you'll get some carbon because it gets pushed into the back side of the intake. That is normal. Some guys will say, well, that's because of fuel injection. Well, that's just not true. Uh, back in the day with a carburetor, and I grabbed a carb here. This is an SNS that I've actually added a fuel circuit to with a Thunder Jet. But oftentimes at around 2,000 RPMs, maybe 1,500, you'd actually have fuel that would pour out of the, of the Venturi here and just come out on, and just pour out onto the engine. Well, we used to call that the fuel wall because you would actually hit that wall because the pulse wave was coming through and it was actually affecting the fuel going into the Venturi of the carburetor. Really, all fuel injection is is a fancy carburetor instead of just having a you know an intermediate a slow speed jet an idle circuit uh, and a main jet and in a typical carburetor or like this if that's what's great about these thunder jets we can actually add circuits and try to deal with that fuel wall that's that's really what you're doing with this uh, because now we can run usually one to two sizes smaller on the main and even a smaller intermediate jet so we can deal with that fuel wall because of that pulse wave um, fuel injection is because of VE tables and everything we can do with a, with a dyno, we're dealing with thousands of jets, right? We're adjusting thousands of jets by going in and playing with VE tables. I mean, it's kind of what it is. Uh, VE is obviously volume of air and, we're, and it's at all these different uh, times and throttle positions and we go in and manipulate that in the dyno room. So that's why a good dyno operator is so important when you, especially when you've changed cams. So, uh, the Screaming Eagle 8 cam has quite a bit of overlap. More cams with more overlap usually re create more reversion. It, it creates more problems uh, for us as far as that goes. So um, again, why, why it's important to have a good dyno operator. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out because a lot of got, times guys will see this oil and they'll see carbon in there and they think they have a valve problem. You know, do a cylinder leak down test or do a compression test and you'll find that that's, that's not the case. So. Let's get moving.